G'day. Here's an upward-facing parabola of steepness 1. Points on this curve have coordinates that satisfy an equation like this, steepness 1. And here's a sideways-facing parabola, also of steepness 1. And points on this curve satisfy an equation of this form. There it is, steepness 1. Great! Now let's play with the algebra of these two equations. In fact, let me just add these two equations together algebraically. And on the left, I'll see I'll get y plus x equals, on the right, an x squared plus a y squared plus a bx plus an ey plus a c plus an f. Grand. So I've got a new equation. And I claim that's the equation of a circle. If you can't quite see that yet, let's do a little bit of algebra on it. Let's uh, subtract x and subtract y from both sides. So I'll get an x squared plus a bx minus an x. That's a b minus 1x, plus a y squared, plus an uh, e minus 1y, uh, plus a c, plus an f, would all be 0. Grand and good. Let me complete the square here, and I will get uh, x plus b minus 1 over 2 squared, minus some numbers. Uh, complete the square here, I'll get y plus e minus 1 over 2 squared, take away some numbers, plus some numbers. Let's bring all the numbers to the right-hand side. This equals some number. I don't need the details, because right there I can see I'm correct. Yes, that really is the equation of a circle of some radius. Grand and good. All right, now let's think about this equation. In fact, let's think about this point in relation to that equation. Now this is a point of intersection between the two curves, so its coordinates make this a true sentence in mathematics, because it's on the upward-facing parabola. But it's also on the sideways-facing parabola, so it makes this statement here also a true sentence in mathematics. Add these two sentences together, it still gives me a true sentence in mathematics. That is, this point here fits this equation. It lies on this particular circle. In the same way, this point here makes this statement true in mathematics, its coordinates at least. Its coordinates also make this a true statement in mathematics, which means its coordinates also makes this a true statement in mathematics. It also lies on the circle. So does this one. So does this one. We have just proven something astounding. If you have two intersecting uh, orthogonal parabolas of the same steepness, then their points of intersection are sure to lie on a circle. A perfect circle. Whoa! Whoa! Okay, here now are two intersecting circles with these equations. In fact, let me write the equations this way. x minus 1 squared plus y squared minus 4 equals 0. Some formula of x's and y's equals 0. That's the first equation. Some formula of x's and y's, x minus 3 squared plus y minus 4 squared minus 10 equals 0. That's the second circle. And this time, let me subtract the two equations. Let me subtract them. All right, okay. So I can see I'm going to have an x squared from this term minus an x squared from that term, so no x squareds. But I will have a, a negative 2x plus 1 from there minus a, a negative 6x, so plus 6x, uh, minus a plus a 9, so it's minus a 9, bingo. Uh, y squared and a y squared from here would subtract, but I will be left with um, uh, positive 8y and negative 16, I believe. Double check my arithmetic, I'm not very good at that. And negative 4 take away uh, negative 10 is positive 6 equals 0. Alright, so no x squares, no y squares. I could have seen it's going to be x's and y's. In fact, it is. In fact, I see it's uh, 4 x's and how many y's? Plus 8y would equal, let's bring all the numbers to one side. So there's a negative 8, there's a negative 24, plus a 6 equals 18. So it's 2x plus 4y equals 9. It's the equation of a line. Okay, what is that line geometrically in this picture? Well, let's look at those points of intersection again. This point right here is a point with coordinates making this a true sentence in mathematics. It's also a point uh, with coordinates making this a true sentence in mathematics. Subtract these two statements, I'll get another true sentence in mathematics. That is, this point fits this equation, it makes this a true sentence in mathematics. This is a line that at least goes through that point. But by the same token, it's also a line that goes through this point. We've just worked out the line that connects the two points of intersections just by playing with the algebra of the two original equations. Wow, this is kind of cool!
OK, so here's what we're doing in general. We're given the equation of one particular curve, given by some formula of x's and y's equals 0. We're given the equation of another curve, given by some formula, another formula of x's and y's equals 0. And we're doing some combination of these two formulas. We have some non-zero numbers a and b. We did a times that first formula plus b times that second formula equals 0. But when I was adding the two equations for my first example, I chose a equals 1, b equals 1. When I was subtracting the, the two equations in my second example, I was really doing a equals 1 and b equals negative 1. So we're looking at combinations of these two formulas and setting that combination equal to 0. That gives me a new equation. I could graph that and I'll get something interesting maybe. But what can I say about that graph in general? Well, we did notice that the points of intersection kept coming up. So let's think about these points of intersection. For example, here's a point of intersection. Its coordinates, whatever they are, since it lies on this curve, are whatever, whatever they are to make this statement true. It has that f of xy equals 0 for its coordinates. This intersection point also lies on this curve, which means, oh, this is also true. Its coordinates make that a true sentence in mathematics about numbers. Oh, in which case, if this is true equals 0 and this is true equals 0, then, oh, this statement would also be true. a times 0 plus b times 0 would indeed be 0. So whatever this curve is, this point of intersection is on it. Ditto for this one. Ditto for this one. Whatever this curve is, all these intersection points actually are part of that curve. Bingo. So whatever this graph is, it goes through all the intersection points of the two original curves. But actually, um, there's something more to say here. Maybe it could do something like this. Maybe it could intersect just one of them later on, but not the other. Maybe it could have a, a, a point like that. Could that happen? The answer is no, no. Suppose I do have a point like that. So it has coordinates that makes this statement true. f of x, y would be 0, because it's on that curve uh, there. But if it's also on this curve, it's also making this statement true. It makes this a true sentence about numbers in arithmetic. Bingo. Oh, so this is 0. This is 0. So that tells me that b, g of x, y is 0. Divide by b tells me, oh, it really made this equation true as well. It had to have been on this curve. Bingo. So if it does intersect the curve f someplace, it must be at an intersection point to both of them. It will never just intersect one curve only. It can only intersect both curves. This is beautiful. This is beautiful. Any combinations of a's and b's, let's keep them non-zeros. So if I've got zeros here, I'm really just going back to the original two curves. So keep them non-zero. Whatever this graph is, it's the graph, a graph that goes precisely through the intersection points of the two original curves and only those points of intersection. Whoa. And what I was doing was choosing nice numbers for A and B so I could actually recognize what that equation is. In the first example, I'd recognize it as a circle. In the second equation, I'd recognize it as a line. But we can play with any numbers of A and B we like and just have fun with this. Actually, it's probably worth thinking through what happens if the two original curves don't intersect at all. Uh, suppose my first curve is like this, uh, f of x, y equals 0. My second curve is down here, and there's no points of intersection whatsoever. Now, I can definitely graph things like this. I'm going to ask, well, could this graph actually intersect one of the curves? Maybe it goes something like this. If that happens, can it happen? Well, if it does, that means we've got a very interesting point right there. The coordinates of this point here have the property that it makes f of x, y equal 0. It also has the property, since it's on the curve here, it makes all of this equal to 0. So that part's 0, all of it's 0, tells me that that part is also 0. That is, oh, this point's meant to be on the curve uh, given by g of x, y equals 0 as well. But if they, these two curves don't intersect, then there is no such point. That can't happen. That can't happen. So if my two original curves don't intersect at all, this graph, whatever it is, will also avoid those two curves. Nothing intersects at all in the picture. That's worth noting, and I think it's time for us to have some more fun with this. Okay, here's a fun question. Here are the graphs of two quadratic equations, and one can check with graphing software or using algebra that these two graphs do not intersect. Here's my question. Can we find the equation of a line that sneaks in between these two graphs and intersects neither of them? Is that possible? 
Well, the answer is yes. We can play the game we were playing. Do some combination of these two formulas, choose some nice coefficients a and b that does the trick for us. Okay, so we want to find real numbers a and b. So if I did a combination of this formula, a times x squared minus y, plus uh, b times this formula, negative x squared plus 4x minus 3 minus y equals 0. Let's choose a nice values for a and b to make this, I guess, the equation of a line. And we know from what we just said, um, since these two curves don't intersect, the line cannot intersect with either curve as well. Right now, I can see I don't want any x squareds, I want a linear equation, in which case I think I want to choose a equals 1 and b equals 1. Let's choose a equals 1, b equals 1. Then I see I've got uh, x squared, negative x squared, we've got negative y. Uh, plus 4x minus 3 minus y equals 0. Uh, that tells me uh, 2 y's equals 4x minus 3, y equals 2x minus 3 halves. Bingo! There's the equation of a line that actually uh, sneaks between the two parabolas, intersecting neither. Wow, kind of cool! Okay, here's something sneaky. I have here a circle whose equation is given by x squared plus y squared equals r squared for some radius r. I've got a point PQ on that circle. And I'm going to ask, can we find the equation of the tangent line to that circle at that point P, Q? The answer, of course, is yes, and there's lots of ways to do it. But let me show you how to do it using the techniques of today. I'm going to be, this is the sneaky part. I'm going to do instead the following. I'm going to actually take my circle, duh, 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 there it is, x squared plus y squared equals r squared, x squared plus y squared equals r squared, and instead I'm actually going to draw another circle of small radius around that point. Now, it's a circle centered at PQ, so I know its equation is going to be x minus p squared plus y minus q squared equals some small radius. I'll use epsilon for small radius, epsilon squared. Now, I know how to find the equation of the line that goes through the intersection points of those two circles. That's what we did in our second example today. I could do that right there. But I can now see in my mind's eye, oh, if I did smaller and smaller circles around that point, that line I'm finding wants to become closer and closer to being the true tangent line. In my mind's eye, you see as epsilon goes to zero, I shrink that circle to a small, small radius, is that line wants to become the tangent line. I bet I could actually then find the equation of the tangent line via that technique. Let's do it. Let's do it that way. Sneaky, sneaky. Uh, but need a bit more space. All right, so I'm going to use the techniques of this, of this video. That is, I'm going to find the equation of this line by looking at a combination of this equation and this equation. So I want to find values a and b that will be helpful. Uh, that combine this formula. So I want a times the first formula, x squared plus y squared minus r squared, plus b times the second formula, x minus p squared plus y minus q squared minus epsilon squared. And I want all that to equal zero, probably going off the screen now. Okay, that's long and scary, but which values of A and B would be nice to choose here? Well, again, I want the equation of a line, so I want no x squared, no y squared. So I just want x's and y's and numbers, which means I want that x squared and y squared there to disappear. In fact, I know there's going to be an x squared from there, I know there's going to be a y squared from there. Ah, that makes me think, let's make those cancel out. Let's choose uh, A equals 1. B equals negative 1. That is, let's subtract them, which is what I did earlier. So it's all consistent. So if I actually choose those values for A and B, I will get that 0. Uh, X squared will cancel out with that. One of those minus one of those. Y squared will cancel out from expanding that. OK. Uh, so on the left, I'll be left with 1 of negative R squared. Negative R squared. Then I'm going to be some minus, OK, the X squared's cancelled. Uh, so minus 2XP gives me plus 2PX. Uh, minus P squared. OK, minus P squared. Uh, y squared is cancelled, uh, minus negative 2qy, so it's going to be plus 2qy, minus q squared, uh, my q is and epsilon is not the same, but that's q, minus q squared, okay, minus q squared, and they'll have minus uh, negative epsilon squared plus epsilon squared. Bingo, yes, that is indeed an equation of just x's and y's and numbers, that's a linear equation. Uh, let me just uh, bring all the xy stuff to one side and all the uh, non-xy stuff to the other side. So I see this is really 2px plus 2qy equals uh, r squared plus p squared plus q squared minus epsilon squared. All right. All right. That looks uh, a, little bit, uh, a little bit annoying. Um, 
oh, 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 this is the point PQ. It's a point on the circle. It satisfies this equation. P squared plus Q squared equals R squared. That's R squared, so it's really R squared plus R squared. So I've got 2PX plus 2QY is 2R squared minus epsilon squared. Let me just divide everything by 2. In fact, that tells me if I divide everything by 2, this equation here is of that line. Get myself some more space. Don't erase the part I need to copy. I can now see the equation of that purple line going through those two points of intersection of that small circle and the big one is px plus qy equals r squared minus epsilon over 2, half of epsilon squared. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. So there is the equation of the line that goes through uh, the points of intersection of the small circle and the big circle. And now I can see exactly what's going to happen. If I let epsilon become smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller, this converges to, that's not changing if epsilon gets, gets smaller. That's not changing if epsilon gets smaller. That's not changing if epsilon gets smaller. But if epsilon's getting smaller and smaller and smaller, this piece is going to zero. So the tangent line, the tangent line, at PQ must be, must be PX plus QY equals R squared. There it is. There's the equation of the tangent line to the circle at the point PQ. Whoa, whoa. I actually kind of love it because it really is this equation. X times X plus Y times Y equals R squared. There's the original circle. Just change one of the X's to a P, the point you're on. Change one of the Y's to a Q, the point you're on, and there's the equation of the tangent line, which is kind of freaky. Is that coincidence or is that something deeper going on there? Whoa, whoa. This is cool stuff.